All right, thank you so much for joining me. I'm T-Pain and welcome to Let's Learn. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right side to jump to any specific sections or example that you'd like to go to. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4. Um, you can download it from python.org slash get it. So today's focus is going to be Python files and user input. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to click on the right side to jump back to a previous video if anything is unclear. All right, Python files, what are they? They're files that end in .py, .pyw, or .pyc. Um, the .pyc is a compiled Python. The other two are writable. In other words, you can change them. So why do we use Python files? Why don't we just punch everything into the shell? Because if you've noticed in the past, we've had to retype and retype uh, stuff over and over again. This allows us to save it all in one location and edit it if we ha need to make any changes rather than having to retype it. So it's very flexible, save our work for future use, we don't have to type things over and over, and we can run whenever we're ready. So how do we create them? Well, it's very simple. First, um, let's jump to our desktop and go ahead and create a folder. And we're going to go ahead and name this folder Python Testing. Enter, enter to uh, jump into the folder, and now we have a nice clean folder. Right click on the inside in here. Um, if you're using Mac, I'm not sure but how you're going to do this, but you're going to go ahead and create a text document where you can edit the whole text name. Um, so you're going to name this um, test.py, and you're going to change the change the file extension to py so that we can actually run it in Python. So yes, we want to change it. We've now created our first Python file. So we're going to right click and we can go edit with idle. Enter. So for our very first Python file, we're going to go ahead and punch in just two lines. The first one is going to be print space super ham because I love ham so much. <laughs> Second line, um, type in raw underscore input open parentheses quotations press enter to end this awesome script in quotations in parentheses and then we're gonna go ahead and save the file there and then close it and now what will happen is when we double click this uh, file it'll run and it'll bring up a command prompt or a terminal if you're on Mac um, and it'll spit out exactly what it does so just double click on it and now we see Super ham is printed at the top, and then we see our misspelled awesome. That's a bummer. <laughs> uh, we see print and uh, press enter to end this awesome script. Press enter, and it ends. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and right click um, to enter this file again, and I'm going to shrink it down. Note that if you double clicked and it did nothing, um, it it could be because you don't have Python connected to Python files, and that's pretty easy to do. You just right click, and then you go open with. And then you choose python.exe, or, or you can always um, go to your program's directory um, in your C drive. C drive, and then uh, Python typically installs on the top of the C drive. So you're going to go right here under Python 27. And then right here, python.exe. You're going to go ahead and drag that file right onto there, and it'll run. Beautiful. So in our script, we use this command raw underscore input. What does it do? Uh, this is a way of getting user input. Um, here I was just using it to stop the script from running and so that when we press enter it would just close out. So how do we use raw input? Well, um, for starters, you want to typically store your uh, values that's going to be returned from the user into a variable. So here I've typed d equals raw input and this basically will store whatever the user inputs or into the variable d. Raw underscore input is the uh, function, and then within the parentheses of raw input, um, you're going to punch in whatever string you want to be output to the user to prompt them to enter something. So in this case, we we said press enter to end this awesome script. Gosh, that's misspelling's bothering me. Okay, and what happens is once the user uh, presses enter, then it continues on the script. Since there is nothing else after the script, it closes out the file. All right, so let's try another example. That's our first ever Python game. We're going to go ahead and create another text file. Right click, and we're going to go ahead and create a text document, and we're going to punch in guessing game, if I can spell. 
file.py. Enter. Yes, we want to change the file for uh, file extension. Okay. And right click to enter with idle. To edit with idle. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so this is going to be a, a few more lines than the last one. We're going to start out by typing highest is equal to 10. Enter. Answer is equal to 7. Enter. Guess is equal to raw underscore input. Open parentheses, quotations. Guess a number from 0 to percent sign D colon space in quotations and then we're going to punch in percent sign space highest so for a quick second I'm going to break up this line but what what we're doing is the highest number is equal to 10 and we want that to be plugged in to where that percent D is because it's an integer so that's all next we're going to type in while open parentheses int open parentheses guess close parentheses is not equal to answer colon so it's basically saying while the integer value of the guess or uh, whatever the user inputs um, is not equal to the answer um, then we're going to keep running this script enter if open parentheses int open parentheses guess close parentheses is less than answer colon so as long as their guess um, when it's converted from a string into an integer is less than the answer enter print space answer is higher close parentheses enter and then we're gonna uh, do else enter print answer is lower so this is basically saying hey if their guess is higher than the answer then print answer is higher otherwise print the answer is lower perfect and after this we're gonna close off the loop by copying this line right here and I'm holding shift and typing and pressing the N key on the keyboard and control C and then I'm gonna press tab once to indent and then paste it right there so this way the user is constantly being prompted because we have the condition of the while loop right here. As long as the answer or their guess is not equal to the answer, we're going to keep asking them to input more and more. And finally, if they've exited the loop, then we're going to go type in raw underscore input, open parentheses, you are a winner face. Exclamation points, close quotations, and close parentheses and this is merely to stop our program um, at the very end so it doesn't just uh, exit and we don't know what happened perfect save it okay so we're now ready to run our script and this time we're gonna run it within idle so the way we do that is go run and then in the drop-down click run module or F5 the keyboard shortcut okay and now we've got it working so it says guess a number from because I didn't put a dang space in there. <laughs> well, um, guess a number from 0 to 10. I'm going to type in mm, 4. Enter. Answer is higher. Perfect. So let's guess 8. And I'm guessing purposely the wrong answer here. Um, so now we type in 7 and it should end our script. Perfect. It says you are a winner face. Enter and then it closes out our script. And now it's uh, done. Perfect. Our script works beautifully. All right, so now we're going to talk about importing modules. And this is a way of getting functions, classes, and variables from other files. So why do we use this? It's a way of accessing other libraries for stuff that you may need. So the way we do this is we use the keyword import. And then we name the file or library that we wish to import from. You can also use from module uh, import some specific thing. Um, there will be an example of that later on. So for now, the reason that we're going to be using this is because our script, if we open it up again, uh, is very bland because the game we already know the answer to. So we're going to go ahead and fix this so it's actually a much more interesting game. So when you import files or libraries, it's important to place them at the beginning of the file. 
So we're going to go ahead and go to the very beginning and type enter enter to get a couple spaces in there. And then we're going to type in import random. And then right here we're going to edit this to where it says 7. We're going to delete that and instead type random dot rand, R -A -N -D, range. All one word. And then we're going to punch in highest the variable that we just declared above. So what this is saying is that from the module random, which we imported above, we're going to access the function called rand range. And what this function does is it gets a number from 0 to whatever the highest value we punch in here. In this case, it's 10. So we're going to get a random number and stick it in our answer. Now, let's go ahead and save the file and go ahead and run it. Go ahead and run, run module, enter. Okay, so now I have no idea what the number is going to be. So I'm going to start out by pressing 5. Enter. Answer is lower. All right, so maybe 3. Enter. I'm a winner. Cool. All right, so now we're going to discuss how to break up your code into separate files, modules, or chunks based on what they do. This will prevent you from having to scroll up and down forever in your code. It makes it much more manageable, reusable, recyclable, and just all around, it's a great practice to get into. All right, so we've got two separate files and we want to import from one of them. How do we do that? You do this just as before with the import and then the file name at the top of the script. Now note that the file that you're importing from must be in the same directory as the other file. So going back to our folder, we have two files here, test and guess, guessing game. If I wanted to access uh, any functions or, uh, from test file, it has to be right next to it in the same directory. All right, so let's go ahead and try another example. We're going to right click and create another file and go new text file. This one we're going to call ph.py. Enter. Yes, I want to change it. Edit with idle. At this point, we're getting pretty good at this, huh? And this is going to be a really short function. Um, we're just going to type def print ham with the h uppercase. Open close parentheses and then put a colon. Enter print space ham. Because I love ham so much. Save it and now we're done with this file. So go ahead and close it. We're going to go ahead and right click and create another text file but this one we're going to name main.py. So a good habit to get into is to name your main file that's going to be um, executing all your main actions that all the classes are going to be imported into whatever it should be named main or something similar so that uh, you know very clearly um, which one you should start with when you're coding and stuff this is merely my practice this is not everybody else's um, but it's something I'd strongly recommend for beginners alright so I've got my main file open I'm gonna start out by typing import space capital PH because I named it PH up here enter enter and now I'm going to create a simple loop that just uh, executes the function within ph um, over and over again. And ph stands for print ham, in case you're wondering. So for i in range 10, if I can type 10, colon enter ph dot print ham. Open close parentheses because we didn't have any arguments within it enter and then I'm just gonna backspace to type in raw underscore input and in the quotations I'm gonna put end of line a reference to Tron if any of you guys <laughs> catch that one okay go ahead and save the file and let's go ahead and run it perfect and notice here that it punched in ham 10 different times perfect and then it printed end of line at the end and now we can just press enter and it ends beautiful. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up today. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final examples as they really do have some thought-provoking concepts within them. Uh, please leave me a comment below if uh, any of this helped you, and please do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And thank you so much for your support, and keep the dream alive! Mm -hmm.